Okay, we're going to be looking at dot plots and histograms today. This is a dot plot. It's literally made with dots. That's why they call it a dot plot. It's a method of visually displaying a distribution of data values where each data value is shown as a dot or a mark above the number line. I, years ago when I first started teaching, we didn't use dots. We did X's. And then they called it a line plot but it's the same sort of thing. So whatever, they, they don't have to use X's. They can use anything they want to, but this is a dot plot. Okay, now let's take a look at what we can do with this data. Each girl in Mr. Sanson's class and Mrs. Quay's class measured her own height. The heights were plotted on the dot plots below. Use the dot plots to compare the heights of the girls in the two classes. Now. This is inches, so we've got 60 here, that means this is 59, 62, 64, you get the idea. Now, that's Mr. Sanson's class, this is Mrs. Quay's class. It said compare the range of the two recorded data uh, values. So we wanted to do 72 minus 59, the range here is, uh, his range is 13. And then Mrs. Quays goes from 72 to 60, and her range is 12. You just literally just do what they ask you to do, and look, his, his range is a little higher. Is it significantly higher? No, not really. One inch is not that much of a deal, but his is higher. And then it says compare their middle values, and really all you have to do is just count how many values you have. There are 25. That means the 13th value is the one in the middle because you've got 12 on both sides, and that is at um, 67. So his is at 67. Mrs. Quai's class, she has 25 as well, and the 13th piece of data here is 65. So Mr. Sanson, again, he has a, he has a higher median than Mrs. Quay does. Um, and then it says compare the means. Well, Mr. Sanson, you would add them all up. You would add up every piece of data. Uh, add them all up and divide by 25. Mr. Sanson's mean is 66.48. Mrs. Quay is 64.8. You could say Mr. Sanson has a larger range. He has a, a larger median and a larger mean. The girls in his class are a little bit taller than the ones in Mrs. Quay's class. And the mode, if you'll see, his mode is even larger than hers. Frequency table. This is an example of a frequency table. It's just a way to organize your data. If, if you were to see this data here, you would put this in a frequency table and you would have values possibly from 59 to 62, from 63. You would have to use the same amount. So if you look right here, well, this says number of marks for one, two, three, four, five, and then they put little lines like this and then the atom at the end and that's because the data is not usually in neat order so you you do that the only thing with the frequency table is whatever interval you set now this does not have intervals but whatever interval you set let's say you say zero to four here zero to four is actually five numbers so when you do this one, you want to make sure you have five numbers. If I'm going zero to four, I want to go five to nine, not 10. Five to 10 would be six numbers. So when you use a frequency table, this has to be consistent and be the same. Um, now, if you wanted to, you wouldn't have to start with zero. You could do one to five and six to 10, and it would work. Or if you're going 10 digits, that's fine. Just be sure that you have the same amount of numbers in each one of these, or your frequency table is incorrect and misleading. By the way, politicians and people like that, or people trying to get you to buy their product, that's what they do. They use misleading data. So you have to be good at picking up on that. All right, now here's a histogram. What is a histogram? It is a graphical display that subdivides the data into class intervals and uses a rectangle to show the frequency of those observations in the intervals. Now, a histogram, the bars, the main thing that you'll notice when you look at a histogram is the bars are connected to each other. They're side by side. There won't be a space between them. With a bar graph, there will be a space between the bars. So, 
that's basically the thing that you want to do. This is a graphical display where the data is grouped into ranges such as 40 to 49. That's what you got here, 40 to 49, 50 to 59, 60 to 69, 70 to 79. So, and notice that they are the same, just like on a frequency table. So this is similar to a bar graph, but in a histogram, each bar is for a range of data. All right, here's another histogram. It is similar again, but, but a histogram groups numbers into ranges. That's about the best thing that you can, and then you want to decide what range you're going to use. So be careful, it groups them in a range. All right, histograms are a great way to show results of continuous data, such as weight, height, how much time, etc. Now, but when we want to use a bar graph, and I want to point out again, these are close together. There are no gaps. With a bar graph, you have gaps. And you'll notice this is not a range. This says USA, India, UK, NZ, Japan. All right, but when the data is in categories, such as a country or a favorite movie, we use a bar, a bar chart, bar graph. All right, and there we go. Thank you.